My name is Janelle. And that starts with a G, and it stands for gorgeous. All right, uh -oh. Janelle. Gorgeous. So don't y'all forget me, okay? I, I do a couple of different things. I have a business that's called Mid-South Home Helpers, where we help people stay at home, in their home, by helping to provide care and assistance. I also am an insurance broker, and that's different than an insurance agent. A broker represents multiple carriers, an agent can only represent one carrier. So, but I'm not here to talk about Medicare today. I'm here to talk about self-care. How many of you do self-care? How many of you are taking care of other people? It's hard to practice self-care, isn't it? You better know it. It does. So what does self-care mean? It's the practice of taking action to preserve or improve one's, one's own health. So how many of you practice self-care? If you're caring for someone else, it's hard. So there's four parts of self-care that I want to talk about today. There's the mind, and that's where I'm going to spend most of my time, the mental, the psychological. There's the body, the physical. There's the heart, which is the emotional. And there's the spiritual. So I'm going to spend most of my time talking about the mental and the, psycholo uh, the psychological part of that. But let's go over some of the other ones first. Emotional self-care. When my husband died, I was totally totally exhausted because I had given everything I possibly could to take care of him in his last day. I didn't do enough self-care because I let myself get down. So I'm here to tell you today, I don't want you to do like I did. Don't do like Gorgeous did, okay? All right. <laughs> I want you to do better. I want you to take baby steps in your healing process. Mm -hmm. I want you to be patient and persistent and set realistic expectations. Now what's that? What's setting realistic expectations? Anybody want to take a guess? You told me you were caregiving, so what's the realistic expectation for you? What for his current? No. Is it realistic that you can do 24 hour care? I'm doing it now with my mom. But you're here today, you're taking a break. Mm -hmm. so I took up a lean time. So you set some time for yourself. I'm up there when you guess. That's real lifted, right? Mm -hmm. That's yes, taking care of you. But that's important. So ask for help. That was the hardest thing for me to do, was to admit that I needed help. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be superwoman. But you know what? I'm not. I'm really not. <laughs> I may be gorgeous, but I'm not super <laughs> All right. Okay, then there's the physical self-care. And this is important whether you're caring for someone else or not. How many of you exercise? Oh, oh good. You didn't see my hand go up. <laughs> <laughs> I got to practice what I preach, don't I? All right, then, everyone. How many of you eat right? I try to do that. And do you get enough sleep? I have to have my sleep. So hygiene and taking time out for yourself, relaxation, are another part of that. And I know you guys are all doing that because you're here today, right? Mm -hmm. You're here today to relax and to enjoy some time with others. Right. So then there's the spiritual self-care. You guys can probably help me with this. What are some things you do for the spiritual? You pray, number one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Bingo. You also, you connect with your faith community, right? Yes, yes. you fellowship. Exactly. Yes. Um, you volunteer. You help <laughs> I'm guessing that if you're here today, you're here, you're somebody who'd like to help us. Yes. Mm -hmm. so I'd be surprised if you weren't. Mm -hmm. So um, you can meditate. Spend some time in nature. There's nothing more relaxing than to take a walk on a, through a wood path that's laid out well that's not likely to trip you and relax and hear the birds sing and feel a little bit of the wind. Yes, ma'am. And if you're not able to walk, you could sit somewhere or stationary yourself somewhere to just look at nature's beauty. That's 
Exactly. That's and, and, and if you just, just be quiet and just, like you said, listen to the birds and watch the, the birds flying and look at the leaves on the trees, that's relaxing. And that's spiritual. You're connecting with nature. You know, a lot of us not able to go hiking and walking and things like that, but one of my highlights of my day at home is to keep my Venetian blinds open where I can look outside. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you be, well, I'm not too old to daydream, but sometimes I end up just, my mind is just, just so, you know, I've been another place and, and I just feel so good. And that's wonderful. We have a hummingbird feeder right outside on my deck. And we, we have the blinds open during the day so we can watch those hummingbirds fly by. There's that, and you know, you gotta watch. They, they, they're, here, they're here and they're gone. Yes. But yes. it's so fun to watch them. Yes. So you can also speak of someone you trust. Yes. Don't bother it all in. Talk to somebody else. Yeah, poor Mary Lou, she got here full today. <laughs> I hadn't talked to her in several days, so it was good. Okay, I want to spend some time talking about our mental self-care. Because when, when my husband died, I was mentally exhausted. Not just physically, but mentally. And it took me a year to come back. I don't know if you've experienced that in your own life. But it takes time to do that. So I want to I want to talk about some things you can do to, to help you stay more mentally healthy. Anybody have any suggestions on what they do? I, I can tell you probably do. Yeah, but you know, rest number one. Rest, okay. Well, because if you free your mind, the rest will follow. If, if you, you, you know, sometimes in life, just like you had a a husband you was taking care of. And it really drained you mentally because you couldn't have any me time. And you, you have to remember the medication, you have to remember the, this, and you have to remember that. But then you're going to have to pull her back. You know, I'm a caregiver by my profession. And you have to pull her back and sit down sometimes, even when you don't want to. Just, just try to think of something nice. Think of something that you make that makes you laugh. You know, because if that mind ain't something, then. That's, that's, that's what wears you down. Yeah. And you got children too, then you have to keep the house, uh -huh. then you have to cook, then you have to, there's a lot of things that can get on our mind that give us a mental breakdown. And get a, in other words, burn us out. True, and you can, you can maybe find a new hobby. That might be just uh, looking at the books that have plants in them and recognizing where they are in your yard. Yes. Can I tell you one of the things I did when I was working? Absolutely. I had a book on birds, and the people that I was working for, they would feed the birds. They'll throw the bird seed in the driveway, uh -huh. and I used to stand in the window and see that I recognized the birds. Oh, cool. And, uh, it, it, really, it really relaxed you. That became a hobby for yes. these bird watching. Yes, yes. So it doesn't have to be something friendly. It can be something very easy. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, so now I want to talk about another thing that I think is important, our mental health. Are y'all ready for this? This yes. is probably one of the best things you can do for yourself. It's to be grateful. So I want us to think about three things that we're grateful for. I'm going to give you two of them, and you have to come up with the third one. So I would like for you to write in your journal, in your book that I gave you, the first one, first two. One, are you ready for this? Yes. You got out of bed this morning. <laughs> Isn't that right? Okay, the second one, and y'all are going to laugh at this. Are you ready for this? Yes. You were able to meet Gorgeous today. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay, now then, I want you to think of a third one, and I want you to write that in your book. What are you grateful for today? I'm grateful to be alive that I can do for myself. Amen. And that's what we want you to do as long as you're able. So hopefully some of these things today that I've shared with you will help you do that and remind you. I didn't tell you anything you didn't already know or hadn't already heard, but I did share with you reminders of things that you can do better, that, that you need to keep in mind so that you can be healthy. Something else you can do is add value to others. 
Did you know that you added value when you shared? Did you know that you added value when you shared? You, you added value by sharing with this group. You add value by coming. How else can you add value? There's one thing we all can do, and it's a five-letter word. It's smile. Have you walked down the, the, uh, the grocery store aisle and people are grumpy looking? They're hustling, they're mad because they can't get around whoever's holding them back. The best thing you can do is give that person a smile. They may not smile back, but that's on them, right? Right. Speak kindly. Even when you're upset with someone about something that's happened. Maybe you're uh, talking to somebody on the, maybe you're talking to MLGW on the phone. And you can still speak kindly to that person, but make your point. Do something nice for another person. I saw someone over here. I think it was you. You were, you were greeted. You were talking to her and encouraging her a while ago. Yes. Weren't you? Weren't you, ma'am? Weren't you encouraging her a while ago when y'all were talking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all were encouraging each other. Uh, so, generate positive energy. Do you like to be around people who are negative? No, 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 no. 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 If I have to sit next to a negative person today, I'm probably going to move to the across the room the next time. Right? I want to be around people who are positive. All right. Well, thank you for coming. So, I want to be around positive energy. When I, when I leave people I've been with that are negative all day, I feel like this. Yes, yes. yes. I'm just almost down to the ground. But when I've been around somebody who's positive, I'm upbeat, I'm happy, I got my second win, and I can do more, right? Yes. You know what else? I'm nicer to other people when I've been around positive people. Right, right, right. Be an encourager. Yes. In your home, you're the grandparent. Your grandchildren and your children need encouragers in their life. You may be the only person who gives them that encouragement. Please be that person. Let that be your legacy. I don't have a lot of money to leave anybody, but I'm going to leave behind a legacy of love and compassion and encouragement. People are going to go, oh yeah, she encouraged me. I'm living my life intentionally that way. You can have a journal. You can write down things. Do the right thing, even when it's hard. So what's the alternative? You can have a poor attitude. No friends. You can be miserable. You can be mad all the time. You can feel bad. Is that the life you want? No, 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 no. What can you do differently then? Smile. That's right. And I got a big smile for you today. <laughs> and when you make other people feel good, you definitely feel good. That's right. That's exactly right. I don't have anything else to share with you today. I know that it's not anything new that you heard, but hopefully it reminded you of how valuable you are to each person that you cross in your in your path. Yes, ma'am. Especially your family. And it's important to be that encourager. You want to be remembered for that? Yes. Oh, yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay, so you're, you're going to remember that you got reminded to be an encourager right here by Gorgeous. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much for letting me come. I hope you enjoyed the little happy. Yes. If you need help with something that I can help you with down the road, please, my number is in the book okay. on the, uh, the, on the um, um, Medicaid. You can put your insurance card inside that little thing, fold it up, put your insurance card in there, and you'll always have your insurance card. And my number is on there if you need me. Y'all have a great day, okay? Thank you. You too. You too, Ms. George.